Well, they were known as the Montana Freemen, and 25 years ago, they would put the spotlight on Montana for a long, bizarre armed standoff with FBI agents that would drag on for months. MTN's Russ Riesinger has a story. For almost two years, the Freeman had refused to be evicted from the secluded 960-acre ranch near Jordan. Looking back on it, you know, I don't. I wished I'd had a lot more sympathy for the people in the Jordan area and what they had endured even before the international media spotlight started to shine on Jordan. It was just strange stuff. That was the first time I, I, you know, brushed right up against that. Um, I, I had no frame of reference on it. They called it Justice Township and had their own interpretation of the law, rejecting the authority of the federal government and using bogus checks and other fraudulent means to heavily arm themselves. The Bible is the, the only true law. Men make rules. God made the law. You know, a couple of years of threats against a judge, false liens being put on people's properties. You know, how much more of that did people have to take? And then all of a sudden the international media spotlight. That must have been really hard. When the group's leader, Leroy Schweitzer, and two others were arrested, it became the lead story on the CBS Evening News. Federal agents move in Montana, their first major crackdown on fugitive armed militia members since the deadly siege at Ruby Ridge, Idaho. Meanwhile, back on the ranch, about a dozen freemen and their followers were holed up, claiming they were on sovereign territory. There was, there was this... Um not a foreboding, but something more than an urgency because we didn't know what was going to happen next. The Freemans showed their displeasure with the outside world today by hoisting an American flag upside down outside their ranch house. We're the conservators of the peace. We don't want to destroy the line. We've been there. You've heard lots of things, anti-government, that type of thing. The FBI moved in black armored cars and a rescue helicopter to Garfield County today. Our concern uh, for violence a lot of concern of outsiders coming in. I think that in talking to FBI agents, that was was one of their biggest fears was, was outside instigators making the situation worse. While the FBI moved in in force, they were in no hurry, willing to wait it out and avoid another violent confrontation. <laughs> I felt for the FBI guys because they're standing out there on, on roads, you know, with enough armament, armament on them to take over a small country. And just this raw wind. And, and then that weather. Goodness, <laughs> that weather was hard. I remember talking with one of them, and I said, you, you must wish these guys would hold up in Hawaii sometime. <laughs> he, he laughed through gritted teeth. Everybody was not happy for the cameras or the, the, uh, in the influx of, of law enforcement as well. The, the, uh, the FBI and ATF, you know, making a presence in... In Montana, in, in the mid-90s, wasn't well received by some. 81 days later, the standoff finally ended peacefully when the remaining Freeman surrendered. It's apparently all over but the shouting and the trip to jail. Nearly three months after it began, the standoff between the anti-government Freeman and federal agents is in its last hours. That was fascinating stuff. I, I've never covered anything remotely like that story. There were some similarities to now, although not to the same degree, but there was there was a real anger. I wish I had realized at the time just how pervasive some of this thought was and where it was going to go. Because even today, we're dealing with people who uh, really are kind of tied loosely, if not uh, actually tied through connections, uh, they're tied philosophically to some of the Freemen. So we're still, we're still dealing with some of their philosophies today. I'm Russ Riesinger reporting for MTN News. And the trial for the Freemen was also a spectacle bringing national news cameras back to Montana again. The leader of the group, Leroy Schweitzer, was convicted on multiple federal charges and died in prison in 2011. Seven others were also convicted and sentenced, with the last of the imprisoned Freemen, Russell Landers, passing away just last week.